In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a knowledge repository in Microsoft Copilot Studio. Now, the knowledge repository which you can use to in Copilot Studio is basically used to ground the data. So take, for example, if you want to build a Copilot, and if you do not want to use uh, the advanced generative feature, which searches in the web, and if you are limiting the information provided to the provided by the copilot specific to say one particular website or say maybe one specific domain of the website or maybe one specific area of the website then you can do that using the knowledge source now from a knowledge source perspective there are a lot of things which you can do from grounding the data but i'm just going to pick one of the component like the public website out of it and i'm try to cover the other components in the upcoming videos now the first thing <clears throat> what you need to understand is that uh, when i say public website uh, means any website which is openly available in the internet and which you can uh, connect to which you verify you can view the page of the website uh, without getting authenticated so that means that anyone with an anonymous credentials uh, can access the information so there is no need for you to have uh, a credential defined okay so it's like basically an anonymous access now from a knowledge source perspective there are things which you can uh, see in over here like the copilot studio uh, allows you to basically get the information from public website or uh, file or uh, scattered files basically any file which is lying within your desktop or your organization files however there are some conditions which you need to fulfill about the size of the uh, file the format of the file uh, then there's sharepoint and onedrive components like if you are storing some documents within your sharepoint and onedrive and if it satisfies the uh, the limit like the 3 mb limit for a file then it will get uh, processed from the uh, copilot studio perspective uh, then you have a uh, data world so you can select up to 15 tables to uh, uh, surface out the data world's backend information uh, to your copilot apart from that there are other uh, you know, data sources which you can utilize like the enterprise website azure sql file share sharepoint server csv file Microsoft SQL Server, Custom Connector, Power Platform Connector Actions, and from a third-party tool perspective like ServiceNow, Tickets, Catalog, Knowledge, uh, Oracle SQL Database, Azure DevOps, Wiki, SAP, ADO, Git, Jira, and Salesforce. So all those things you can connect to your Copilot. Now, how to navigate now first thing is you need to create a copilot and once you provision the copilot you can specify the knowledge source now when you provision a copilot at that point onwards you can start providing the knowledge source as well so you need not wait till the copilot gets provisioned then only you should you will be able to add a knowledge source like you can also do that whenever you're provisioning it now from a knowledge perspective here uh, when you click on add knowledge uh, it will ask you for some information like the knowledge name the knowledge description and uh, what kind of uh, knowledge uh, source which you are referring to now from a knowledge source perspective here the, you'll find all this list like the public website files sharepoint onedrive dataverse and the other things which i have just discussed now okay now where the knowledge files are stored now once you uh, add in uh, any attachment or the file system so take for example if you're adding a knowledge uh, of say files okay if you have some scattered files within your desktop or within your organization you can upload the files over here but then in the back end it gets stored in chatbot subcomponent table so any items any component of a copilot will get stored in the chatbot subcomponent now the component type will be different like one of them can be a bot file attachment one of them can be a topic another can be a bot variable so it is all a composition of all the subcomponent creates a, uh, a comp get composed to a particular bot or copilot now let me show you in action so what we are going to do we are going to create a copilot so first let me create a new copilot and this copilot what i'm going to do is I'm not going to type in any message over here. What I'll say is skip to configure. And then from here, 
I will name the copilot. What I'm going to say, this is uh, Giri website copilot. Okay, so this is a uh, copilot which I'm creating specifically for my website. Okay, now I'll just specify the description. This copilot gives profile info about Kirish. Now you can specify an instruction as well. So maybe I'll just put the instructions over here. Uh, and from here, here, you can add a knowledge source as well. Okay, so if you click on add knowledge, then here you can specify the public website, SharePoint and OneDrive. But note over here, when you add a knowledge source over here, only two items are visible, like the public website and SharePoint and OneDrive, okay? Now I'm not going to add the public website from here. What I'm gonna do, I'll just cancel this out and I will just start provisioning this copilot so i'm provisioning this copilot this copilot will get uh, created so this is related to my website so what i'm going to do I'll, I'll just navigate quickly to my website and then i'll try to say which page i want to parse okay so here i have a uh, uh, page called as power platform tools so it has some information with regards to tools which are available for power platform component and then there is another page called the Center of Excellence Starter Kit, COE app, COE report. So I'm happy with the content just for demonstration purpose. So what I'm going to do, once this copilot is provisioned, okay, so now this copilot looks to me, it's provisioned. So let me unzoom a bit and I'll just close this. So if you see this website, uh, this copilot gives profile info about Girish. Now from here, I can add a knowledge or maybe I can go into the knowledge tab and then I'll click on knowledge source so if i click on add knowledge source i i can see a lot of other options get lighted up so when you create a copilot at that point of time only public website and files are enabled however once the copilot is provisioned you can get other options lighted up as well but in our case we are just focused on public website so i'll just click on public website and i'm gonna put the url now the url for my website is gerashupal.com so I'll just add this and in the name, I can put Girish website or whatever name uh, suits over here and description I can even edit as well. So this says this knowledge source searches information of web found in Girish website and I'll say and gives profile info. Okay. And I'll click on add. Now what it is doing in the back end, it, it will basically start looking into the pages, various pages. Uh, make sure the public website is crawlable make sure the public website there are some uh, uh, guidelines which you need to follow when you add a public website so as you might have seen that when i added a public website it provided me with some instruction okay now i will just uh, go through that instruction with you uh, once this particular website gets added into the system it might take some time depending on how the website is structured how uh, queryable it is and how uh, uh, is, is there any latency now in this case uh, this has provisioned very quickly so if you see the status as ready that means this website is now ready to uh, be used as a knowledge source and you will see the filter over here like it has come as public website now what i can do i can click on three dots i can click on open to navigate to the website whether to see whether that website is active or not or i can edit or delete now if i click on edit then I will be able to change the knowledge name, knowledge description, web page. Now, over here, uh, what I'm going to do, I'll just click on knowledge over here and click on knowledge, add knowledge. Now, as you see over here, uh, we have gone through this uh, instruction set. But again, I'll show you if you click on public website, these are the set of instructions which you need to follow. Now, the instruction says over here that if your site is external, make sure it is indexed or found by Bing search engine. If it is not found by Bing search engine, then this may not work. And it says don't use sites with forums or comments from end users. This can reduce the relevancy of the answer. So if it is like a heavily used forums or website uh, or uh, it, it, it is kind of a discussion group or something which is very huge in size, uh, your uh, relevancy of the answer responded by the copilot will, uh, will not be accurate. 
uh, also it says don't include query string more than two levels of depth now in our case there was no depth because it was just gerishupal.com but had it been gerishupal.com slash blog slash one two five slash something then it will not accept that in the url so these are some of the things which you need to make sure that you adhere to now let's leave this and now test our bot okay so here it says hello and the uh, it has given me this greeting and I'm, I'm okay with it now now what i'm gonna do i'll just say first greet the bot i'll say hello and then i'm gonna ask some question okay uh what is creator kit okay so i'm just putting some some information uh let's see if that uh if this copilot is able to find that or not and now it has found that information the creator kit for power apps helps you create ui experience and if you see the grounded data it has gone into my website so if i just click on the citation link then it has successfully gone into the creator kit page now this one is coming from the power platform creator kit section or menu now if i ask something about power apps wrap or center of excellence let's try finding that out oh, what is center of excellence now again it will start searching for this information and now if you see uh, it has found the information from my website so if i go into this uh, it has found the information from microsoft resources okay now if you see here it has gone from microsoft resources and it has found the information now similarly i can ask multiple questions now we are sure that it is pointing to my website rather than going into some other website now the topic which gets created basically over here is the conversational boosting because there are no topics defined which uh, uh, because we have just created the bot uh, or the co-pilot and we haven't added any specific topic related to center of excellence or the creator kit now it has not found anything so that means it has reached to the unknown intent from a triggering perspective and it is part of the topic called as conversational boosting now what it does it goes into the uh, the node of creating a generative answer and then the entire active uh, artificial intelligence kicks in and then it will start looking into the knowledge sources now in the knowledge sources we have already provided information and i got this information so uh one more thing what we can ask is uh different tesla models okay so if i type in this information different tesla models let's see if it finds this information or not now it has gone and found this information okay now it says tesla currently offers several models in their lineup but this information is not coming from the uh from my website because it has now didn't find any information from the knowledge source and it has gone into the internet and start looking in for this information now there are various settings which you can do now if i go into the settings and if i click on generative ai you can see that uh how should your copilot decide how to respond now there are two options classic and generatives now we can select classic or generative depending on whether you want to use the generative ai to identify the most appropriate combination of actions and topic uh, now in this case i haven't made any change but if you want to add more intelligence then we can go ahead and do that now i'll just click out of it now from a, a website perspective now if i click on knowledge i can go ahead and add multiple websites so it is not limited to say one website but i can add multiple so i've just put tesla i'll put tata.com i'll put microsoft.com i'll put amazon.com i'll put uh, abc.net.eu so like this i can go ahead and add various uh, public website and then once all these websites are added i should be able to uh, get in those information if i uh, ask the information to my co-pilot now as you see over here i've added more than six websites okay and then it it has uh, uh, gone and it has found that okay now this website is all good to go status is ready and i should be able to access this now so take for example if i add a public website and if i say add say my website girishupal.com and maybe i'll just put in some information say info slash uh, process 
slash test one. Now, if you see the moment I go into the second level, it has prompted me that this website can't be more than two level deep. So if you want to parse anything related to the folder of process or test one, what I need to do is like, I need not provide this information. I just need to type in girishapal.com slash info slash process. Okay, so anything which is too beyond two level deep, it will not accept. So we need to just leave it as it is. So if you have this a folder structure, then you can go ahead and just add it over here. And then once you add it, you should be able to parse specific information from that specific folder. So that's it folks, this is all about adding knowledge specifically related to the website, specifically related to the public website in Copilot Studio. Thanks for watching.